welcome to the inaugural episode of One, One and Done, Done. Discography's new show that tackles the uncomfortable topic of bands that have only one thing to show for. Because there are bands that are interesting that we would love to talk about on the show, but you can't just do one record on the show. Or can you? Yes, you can You now. can on this show. Yeah. Or can you? Yes, you can. All right. So this particular episode of One and Done is, in a sense, the overlord of all episodes uh, and notions of One and Done because it's... <laughs> Okay, first of all, let's define a concept. Okay, let's define this word. Supergroup. How would you define the word supergroup, Joe? Supergroup has at least two and preferably three famous people in it. Yeah. Preferably at least three. Right. But two minimum. Right. And um, who, who have been in other different things and don't normally work together. Right. Like the Beatles aren't really a supergroup, even no. though John they're Lennon... A sup and no, they're a supergroup. <laughs> <laughs> that's two words. different two words <laughs> yeah two words uh but yeah the, so the group that we're tackling tonight is in many respects the ultimate super group they're the first one uh maybe not uh, the actual first one but the first one where that term was bandied about incessantly and frankly they are the most super duper of all the super groups. <laughs> this is kind of the one and donest of the one and done. It's <laughs> kind right. of the king of the one and done. Uh, yeah, albums. yeah. These guys were uh, were actually around and in existence for a precious brief amount of time. In terms of reputation, at least, this is a uh, one of the you know most famed one and done yeah, records. It's true. Whether it's good or not, we'll, right. so we'll soon find out. We shall. So, uh, blind faith. From 1969, listless jamming turned the great white hope for rock's future. <laughs> they didn't really turn anything. <laughs> they, they turned just, it they like in a, thing. <laughs> in a couple weeks. Uh, it turned that into that. So it's uh, like the loaf of bread in my bread box, fresh turned stale. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, everyone pretty much knows how these guys came to be. Uh, the, the cream broke up. Cream, I, I feel, are overrated. We're going to get to them at, at some point. We're definitely going to. Uh, going to wind up talking about their music. But it's uh, really, really pompous stuff, really big. Uh, and Blind Faith kind of follows in those footsteps before uh, Clapton, Eric Crapton, starts to you know, re reduce things down uh, to something a little bit more uh, capably digestible. Yeah, before he started shooting sheriffs and whatnot. Right, right. Um, so... Uh, we have Steve Winwood as a part of this thing as well. So yeah, so he was a big star <coughs> for the Spencer Davis group. Um, it was kind of already... A, and, know, and, and traffic. And yeah, right. traffic, right. Traffic was, traffic was very much a, a viable yeah. concern at this point. So he's a big star. And um, obviously, of course, Eric Clapton and Ginger Baker. Um, well, at first, it's just the two of them, right? They kind of talk, no, they talk no, Ginger into doing it. No, Ginger kind of just appeared. Yeah. Like they kind of didn't... Eric Clapton did not want this to be cream. Right. But what happened was Ginger just would, he could not be sh shook. <laughs> so he stayed, but it was not initially uh, yeah, right. Ginger. Yeah. So but, <laughs> Ginger Baker seems like a tough hang. He yeah. seems like a yes, tough guy. Yes. To hang out yes. <laughs> so um, traffic was on a hiatus in Christmas 1968. And Steve Winwood starts to jam with his good friend Eric Crapton. So Crapton is uh, pretty psyched about the jam sessions. Uh, and but he's hesitant to start, you know, a real group. He's got enough on his goddamn plate. So at one point, um, you know, they thought they were actually going to record with Duck Dunn and and Al Jackson Jr. Uh, the rhythm section of Booker T and the MGs, which definitely would have been interesting. Um, but uh, in early '69, Clapton and Winwood moved into Traffic's rehearsal cottage, um, you know, in uh, in Berkshire which they had written Berkshire poppies about. Um, nobody, and then, has, nobody has rehearsal cottages anymore. <laughs> I have dozens of them. <laughs> it's their imperative. So here's what happened. They're at their rehearsal cottage. Who comes and knocking on the door? But uh, the guest who wouldn't leave, Ginger Baker, he turns up one day to just sit in with them as if that's what all he was going to settle for. Uh, with these, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, they all c seriously considered forming a group, um, but Clapton was actually the one 
who questioned letting Baker in the band. He saw the whole thing happening again. And of course, that is exactly what happened. And there's also another dude. There's another dude named Rick Gretsch. This is the most important element <laughs> of the Blind Faith sound. He's mostly famous for playing in Blind Faith. <laughs> right, right. He also played in a band called Family, which is an intriguing band. Um, you know, really probably the least important of the guys here. Rick Gratch is like the equivalent of the guy who like pl plays in the minor leagues for like 10 years. And then he gets like, he gets called up to the major leagues like for like, t for like a week. Yeah. And then gets to hit like one time. He's like, the yeah. moon, he's like the moonlight Graham of, <laughs> of bass players. I guess. <laughs> yeah. This poor guy. Um, you know, so. Uh, you the know, whole story of them coming together and splitting up is pretty boring. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It happened fast. <laughs> okay, so they came together and jammed in December '68. Mm -hmm. They announced to the press that they're a band on February uh, in February '69, and uh, the album is recorded uh, February to June '69, and then they're broken up by the end of the summer. Yeah. So, so the first thing they do is they play a big concert. Right. That's the first official piece of traffic business. They play a concert in Hyde Park. And there's like a hundred thousand people there. It's like a little like pre Woodstock kind of thing, right? And then, um, and then, frankly, the rest doesn't matter. If yeah. you're really interested, crack open a fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. Okay. They, they uh, the, here, here's something that you should know, though. There's a really young girl with no shirt on on the front cover of the album. Yeah, uh, which is uh, was they, not even cool then. Uh, yeah, one of, those, one of those things. Like, yeah, there was a different time though. But yeah, but even, no, even no, that even then, time, it was yeah. it wasn't cool. That's like saying. Uh, yeah, it was a different time. Uh, yeah, but that woman's having sex with a dog on the curve of your record. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a topless 11-year-old girl um, who's holding a silver-painted model of an aircraft. Um, kind of a weird one. <clears throat> uh, there's alternate artwork, uh, which is probably, um, you know, probably recommendable. But um, now I'm going to say right off the bat, this is generally not my usual typical kind of thing. Right, like blue, it's not. Bl blues rock. I like, you know, I like Zeppelin. There are some things I like in the genre, but this is—is is, is this your thing though? That being said, this one, I like it okay. okay. I like it okay. okay. All right. I think. So I think. Uh, well, we'll, we'll talk. Let's about talk it. about the songs. <laughs> yeah. So the first one is "Had to Cry Today." It's a Steve Winwood song. Yeah, you so like that song? Yeah, that one I do like. There are several like kind it. of like extended workouts on this. Um, you know. <laughs> Eric Clapton, you know, he's kind of an easy like a uh, target uh, whipping boy because yeah. he seems very very un very unpleasant, you know, he is uh he said racist things in public. He's like And uh, now politically, he's really he's on the wrong side of history. Yeah, and he's he's made he's you know, he's made tons of sh bullshit music over the years, but but at yeah. this time he's playing some pretty amazing guitar. He's, yeah. you know, he's he plays some burning guitar on this. This is some of his really some really excellent playing, especially on that first song Had to Cry Today. Yeah. Um, you know, for a 9-minute blues exploration, it's pretty good, I have to say. Mostly yeah. but mostly cuz um <coughs> you know, his, his 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 soloing, his, his playing and it's really good. Yeah, he was capable of unleashing some incredible leads at this point. Uh, you know, n obviously no surprise that there was graffiti all over England that spelled out Clapton is God. Um, you know, that would be a long slope down from here. This song would have been even better if it was like four minutes. There's right. like a whole long part at the end where him and w like Winwood's playing an organ solo and like Clapton's mm -hmm. soloing at the same time. It's just like yeah. pretty grating. It, it goes on forever. It's a nine minute song, but ultimately, um, you know, a really good one. Yeah, too. it's fine. That I one's like cool. It. I, that's um, then we're, <clears throat> then we're kind of in the meat and potatoes of the record because, you know, even though they're known as a jammy band, the song songs on this are really kind of the most towering achievements. Can't Find My Way Home by Steve Winwood. Absolutely classic. This yeah, is that's a great that's song. That's great. I mean, Easily the best on the album, I think. And one of a total of two outstanding classics from the record. When I listen to this, you know, I, you know I've heard, you've heard the song a million times. It's a staple of classic rock radio and everything. Um, but listening to it kind of closely, like as a detailed listen, it, there's a couple of really weird things in the recording. Like like Ginger hits this really shitty sounding trash can cymbal a bunch of times. It's like this really the shittiest <coughs> sounding like it like sounds like you're crashing two garbage can lids <laughs> together. So it's like this pretty acoustic song. It's just such a strange element in the, in there. Um, 
And then the, there's like a the <laughs> there's a one chord sequence in it that sounds like they didn't really figure it out quite right. It sounds like <laughs> sounds like they're kind of fumble. It's the part right before they say the title. It's like a descending uh-huh. figure, and it sounds like they just kind of flub it every time. <laughs> 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 they didn't figure out what the best way to do it was. So other than that, you know, um, it, it's just you kind of don't really notice those things um, when you're just listening to it kind of on the radio or something. Right, I never right. did. Those things never stood out to me before. There's a, I've actually noticed a bunch of moments of from records. Uh, in this nexus in particular, meaning the you know the Bonnie and Delaney and Bonnie and uh-huh. uh, Derek and the Dominoes and Cliff, I have a bunch of the like the um, uh, the Bobby solo records, Bobby Woodfield, uh, and they leave a lot of mistakes in. Yeah, there's a thing about authenticity, but honestly, <clears throat> some of the mistakes are jarring because they just they, they just frankly they don't work at all musically. Right, right. Um, but they're quick, and then the uh, the clams, we move on. Now, another thing about Can't Find My Way Home, sometimes Steve Winwood, I feel like, is one of those singers that's singing at like the ultimate top of his range all the time. Like He's a high-effort kind of singer. Yeah. Can't Find My Way Home, he's in a nice kind of comfortable range, mm-hmm. and he's kind of hitting the notes all. like He sings it real good. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good on that song. So, yeah, thumbs up on that song. And then uh, the next one is Well All Right. Um, and b- by the way, before we go on, Can't Find My Way Home, you know, growing up in uh, suburban New Jersey, uh, you know, it definitely, uh, on <laughs> K-Rock, all these other <laughs> stations, it'd be on all the time. It was a staple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and th- frankly, the fact that it is, you know, uh, more than just peripherally about the notion of being wasted and can't find my way home mm-hmm. means it's it's you know it's got a fan base forever <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um so well all right is a buddy holly cover um and it is uh, pretty awesome actually this like one is one, this right. one is surprisingly engaging i think well the, the slightly different configuration winwood's playing piano here and not the the throaty hammond organ so it's kind of like a little tighter kind of they sound pretty good as an ensemble in this, in this one. They sound like they're playing nice together. Yeah, that one that one takes me by surprise pretty much every time. I'll give that one a thumbs up. So far, it's doing pretty good. So far, so good. Uh, Presence of the Lord, that closes out the side in a delicious way. I love this song. Uh, this is back when Crapton could write a classic song. This yeah. is sort of his I- iteration of you know what Can't Find My Way Home is. Um, you know, yeah, this song I'm not super crazy about. I know it very well. I played it in a band when I was like 19. We, the band I was playing How come? covered do, it. Do you think I it's just, sanctimonious? No, or? I just think the melody and the chord changes are all kind of pe- kind of pedestrian. Um, hmm. I don't th- it's not really that super <coughs> melodic of a song. It's all kind of very vanilla to me. It's our, it, You know what? The feel of it's good. The, the, the feel of them playing it, the way they play it, it's like a good arrangement of it. It sounds kind of dramatic. Like the organ is kind of all churchy sounding on this one yeah, yeah. appropriately. So it's a good arrangement. I don't really love the bones of the song, but I, it's, I can, it's not, I a, it's not a bad song. It's not, yeah. I think it's not, I don't like love it to death, but yeah. it's, you know, mild thumbs up. I could definitely see that. It, I never liked it quite as much as Can't Find My Way Home, but uh, you know. Also, the second verse is just the same as the first verse. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't give you value <laughs> couldn't for your be, money. You not even be bothered to write yeah. the verse. <laughs> uh, you know, this album side, there's nothing bad on it, I think. Uh, yeah, I love it. Side one's definitely... The side one's <clears throat> great. Side one's the one you want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's to put it mildly. So let's look at side two. Side two, we start with Sea of Joy, uh, which is a five-minute Steve Winwood song. I'm mentioning the time for a reason, uh, but uh, it, it's a terrific underrated tune that you could easily imagine uh this one on a latter day traffic lp you know this one i actually think is great well this one is the one to me that has the most of like winwood trying to hit those super high notes that he struggles to hit Oh, okay um i mean he can't he hits him but it's like it's it sounds like it comes at great effort like vein Mm -hmm. popping in head (laughs) 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 um yeah, I, it's okay. This one, I think, kind of falls off. This is kind of like weaker than anything on side one. Hmm. Um, don't don't really love it. Yeah. Well, if you don't love that, I certainly don't know what you think about Do What You Like. Yeah. Uh, this is written by Ginger Baker, which right off the bat, you know there's something fishy there because the guy's not much of a writer. Uh, this is a shit excuse for filler material. Uh, it really was an EP at heart because this song's an embarrassment. There's a fucking bass solo. Uh, there's a fucking drum solo. There's every last 
possible gesture that a dinosaur would extend <laughs> when they hadn't done their homework and actually had written a damn song like they should have. Um, you know, the, if they just kept it up uh, from the first side, it really would have been potentially a great record. Um, yeah, as is not bad. <laughs> there's some definite signs of intentional padding <laughs> right, <laughs> on this right. record. So this one, like, is just like, <clears throat> like how long is it? Fifteen minutes or something? Yeah, but yeah. It's just pure padding. Yeah, like, it's, it's fi- they fifteen wrote minutes like, and change. Five it's minutes before they came in. Um, exactly. And then even the first tune on side one, "Had to Cry Today," they pa- they padded that one out too. That could have yeah. been half the length, you know. <clears throat> and then like you know, the presence of the Lord, he only writes the one verse and repeats it. There's some there's some cutting of corners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, these guys are getting baked and just slumping into <laughs> yeah. a corner at this point. But uh, they're all such strong flavors as musicians that their personality kind of comes through. And right. you know, like Ginger plays great on it. You know, they they get some things cooking. I yeah. Mean, you know. uh, just as a side note, uh, the bonus disc of Jams, which, man, does that phrase sound unappealing, does not include uh, Gretsch, uh, mm-hmm. who had yet to join them, but includes a guest percussionist, Guy Warner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was, even at the time, Blind Faith was met with a mixed response. So uh, in August 69, for the Village Voice, uh, Robert Criscow uh, said he fa- thought none of the songs really were exceptional and said, uh, I'm almost sure that when I'm through writing this, I'll put the album away and only play it for guests. Unless I want to hear Clapton, he is at his best here because he's kept in check by the excesses of Winwood, who is rapidly turning into the greatest wasted talent in music. <laughs> there, I said it and I'm glad. <laughs> he, kinda, he gave it a B. He kind of nails it. <laughs> yeah, he d- <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. It's a weird one. It's not quite an outlier uh, because this is kind of, you know, uh, it's been such a staple of rock radio for such a long time. Um, yeah, even uh, Presence of the Lord you'll hear on like classic rock radio sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, ultimately uh, it's, uh, it's a real dinosaur like behemoth. Um, that last song, that 15 minute long one, that's, I think that's maybe the closest that any actual released music ever got to Spinal Tap's Jazz <laughs> Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's the closest yeah. they ever got. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, it's pathetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you heard any of that uh, that weird ass uh, Ginger Baker stuff from the 70s when he went to Africa? No. Not weird ass. I should say just more fella cootie like. I have not heard. You know, Ginger Baker's a really great drummer. He was always yeah. kind of—he's kind of one of the best things about this record. Again, kind of a strong flavor, very, kind of very recognizable. I don't know. Maybe it's good. I have not uh, delved into Ginger. The be- look, the best solo. thing about this record, there's no question. And and really, frankly, <clears throat> if you wanted to make the ultimate iteration of this project, it would be "Can't Find My Way Home" on the A side and "Presence of the Lord" on the B side. Right. That would be the ultimate iteration of this project. Uh, instead. An entire album came out of it. To say that we're uh, uh, that we're uh, you know super duper grateful is maybe an overstatement, but um, it's uh, it's it's nice to have. It's That's a not- all I got to say. It's about a it. notable one and done. Um, it is. Its, it's the most notable one and done. Yeah. So. And we love you guys for listening to it. Frankly, the fact is that if you <clears throat> if you uh, are listening to this episode there's no way you didn't know about this uh, this album before uh, pressing play <laughs> so we appreciate you hanging out with us for a few are you uh, going to rate this one is I there know, a star rating yeah we don't really do that I don't think I, ha- I, I did yeah, yeah. Uh, what would you give it I gave it three and a half that's exactly what I would give it yeah. Yeah. thanks for joining us guys on one and done, and done.